Thank you, Rodel. Are you enthusiastic too? To be enthusiastic, you have to what? To act. Ay, ang galing ng mga boss students, no? All right. Are you happy to be in church today? Amen. I am so much excited to share with you God's Word. And um, this is the last Sunday of April. We're on the second quarter of the year. No? Napakabilis ng panahon. Wow. Okay. A little bit uh, of background of what I'm going to share with you today. Last February, I shared about uh, something uh, about crossing over in the book of Joshua. And uh, I preach here in our church about trusting in God's promises. Can you still recall it? And, um, you know, it's really about being courageous and being strong uh, as God's, uh, you know, command to the whole of the nation of Israel no, through, uh, through Joshua. Now, we're going to talk about inheritance this morning. And uh, how many of you here, how many of you here, you have already received an inheritance? Okay, or probably you know that you have an inheritance to receive someday or one day. Okay, now I know that that is a hard question to answer. We're not really, uh, we're not really sure about it. If our parents have an inheritance for us, and um, you know, maybe that inheritance will be coming from your loved one, your parents or your relatives. But we're going to take a look of the meaning of what inheritance is. And uh, according to Cambridge Dictionary, money, land, or possessions received from someone after the person has died. So the inheritance defined as something that you are going to receive after the person has died. Okay? And uh, I search more about, uh, about the, uh, the definition of inheritance Coming from the, you know, from the Institute of Medicine, naman, no? National Library of Medicine, they said that it is a process. Everybody say process. You know, it is a process which involves the passing on of the material property from one generation to another. You know, this definition is now very clear. It is the process of passing on of material property from one generation to another, usually within the family generally from older parents or donors to their children, and they are called heirs, which is completed after the death of the older generation. Okay? That is the definition of an inheritance. Now, we're going to talk about biblical inheritance. So what about something, an inheritance that the Bible says? Okay? And... Uh, you know, ano ang biblical inheritance? So we're going to take a look first uh, in the Old Testament context. The Old Testament is rich in its usage. By the way, this is coming from the Baker's Evangelical Dictionary of Biblical Theology. And they said that uh, in the Old Testament, it is rich in its usage of the inheritance metaphor. The terms for inheritance occur over 200 times. You know, the, phrase, uh, the word inheritance... Uh, appeared 200 times, most frequently in Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Psalms. In the theological sense, to inherit means to receive an irrevocable gift. It is to receive an, an irrevocable gift with an emphasis of the special relationship between the benefactor and the recipients. Now, take a look at this. Unlike in the legal inheritance, okay, we're talking about legally. Unlike in the legal inheritance, which refers to the actual property or goods received after a family member's death, the benefactor, who is God, God doesn't die, yet He provides material and spiritual blessings for His people. The focus of the inheritance concept in the Old Testament is God's promise to Abraham. The land of Canaan was given to him and his descendants as eternal possession. We're going to talk about that later on. Now, the biblical inheritance in the New Testament. Throughout the New Testament, a striking promise for believers is simply the inheritance. You can see that in Acts. You can see that in Ephesians and Colossians. They talk about the inheritance. And what are those? Generally, the promise refers to the possession of salvation. The promise of what? Salvation. 
And uh, the believer's inheritance is described more specifically as internal and joyful existence with God. Believers are promised an inheritance that can never be perished, spoil or fade, and it is kept in heaven for you. Wow, and that's in 1 Peter uh, 1 uh, uh, verse 4. Inheriting the world to come is a guarantee for all those who belong to God's family. So, uh, church, today in this message, I will not be, uh, I will not be discussing the long sections on, on how Joshua distributed and divided the whole uh, land of Canaan among the tribes of Israel. We're not focusing on that, but we're going to be summarizing four main points they are key truths here from this story that we need to take away you know, today. And the first one I'd like to give is that God is true to His promise to give them the land of Canaan. Totoo ang pangako ng Panginoong Diyos sa kanila na ibibigay sa kanila ang lupang pangako. Okay? Why don't we all stand, church, as we read the passage today in Joshua chapter 21, verses 43 to 45. Okay, so why don't we all read this uh, together? So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their forefathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. And everyone was fulfilled. Not, Sabiron, not one of all the Lord's promise, you know, to the whole of the nation, even including us today, has failed. God is always true to what He promised. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so much, so much passionate to pursue Your Word, to hear You, and to encounter Your very presence today. And I pray, Lord God, that You will prepare our hearts to receive greater things, greater spiritual things coming from above. You said, Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes from You. Lord, we want to receive everything that you have in store. And may this day be a day of blessing and breakthrough. May this day be a day of remembering of what you have done, Lord, in the past and the things that you're going to do now and the things that you're about to do in the coming of, uh, days, Lord. So we bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So, church, 680 years ago, I mentioned this in February, that 680 years that's how long it was the promise was fulfilled to the whole of the nation of Israel. God promised Abraham that land, okay, that land. And the promise continued on Isaac and Jacob, and now the promise has finally come to pass after 680 years. Mga kapatid, if you are not familiar in the book of Joshua, this is the, the historical context of this is that the Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt you know, have been set free by God and He used a man named Moses to deliver them from captivity, to, to deliver them from slavery. And God has a plan of bringing them out from Egypt to the land of Canaan. And after the Israelites wander in the wilderness for how many years? For 40 years, they've been wandering the wilderness, and that was the result of their disobedience. Now here comes Joshua, their new leader. And Joshua is now about to lead them, you know, to lead them to cross over the Jordan River. And that's not the end of the story. After crossing the Jordan, they fought many battles, and then they drove out many inhabitants. They are wicked inhabitants or nations so that they can start occupying the land. So that's the context of this book. And there are essentially three parts of the book of Joshua. I've mentioned before that the three parts of this book is about the preparation of the promised land, the preparation for them to go to the promised land. The middle part is the actual context of conquering the promised land. And the last part of the book of Joshua is the division of the promised land among the tribes of Israel. Now, after being slave in Egypt, no, they were wandered in the wilderness or in the desert for 40 years. And then after years of battling against the other nation, they have come finally rest on their own land. And now we can also see that, see from this that God's timeline is not the same like ours. 
Yung timeline ng Panginoon, hindi katulad ng sa atin. Although God's timeline is not the same like ours, but I want to tell you, He can be trusted in His timing. Amen? Why? Because His words are true. Okay? His words will always be true. Numbers 23.19, God is not a man that He should lie, nor a son of man that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does He promise and not fulfill? So iba ang timing ng Panginoon. Maybe you have been waiting for so many years. Maybe you have been waiting for a breakthrough in your business. But God has a specific time for Him to give you what you need. God has a specific timeline in order for us to run and to take that path, the course, you know, that God has been leading us for a time and season. So that's the first uh, key truth that I want to give you, that the promise of God is always true. And that was fulfilled when He brought His people from Egypt to the land of promise. The second key truth in this story is that the Israelites must take hold of God's promises by Faith. By what? Kailangan, they need to take hold of the promise of God by faith. Now, God makes specific promises. God is the one who's giving His promise. But unless the people take hold of them by faith, they will not receive the promise. And the greatest example of this po was the previous generation who didn't believe to the report of these two young men, Joshua and Caleb, na kaya nilang pumasok, di ba? The ten brought uh, the ten brought uh, the ten spies or the ten young men uh, brought a negative report. We cannot do it. We're like grasshoppers. They're they're giants. But Joshua and Caleb said, "We can conquer it. We can go into the promised land." And the whole generation who didn't believe to that report, they died in the wilderness during that span of forty years. Okay, and then so they did not enter the promised land because of their lack of what. Lack of faith. And God would always be true to His word. At nagpatuloy ito, you know, this story continued on during the division of the land. Let's take a look in Joshua 18 verses 1 to 3. The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The country was brought under their control, but there were still seven Israelite tribes. Ilang tribes? Seven you know, who had not yet received their inheritance. So Joshua said to the Israelites, How long will you wait before you begin to take possession of the land the Lord, uh, that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? Gano pa katagal kayo maghihintay? You have to occupy that land already. Now, mga kapatid, this is a picture of God's offering a gift, but like, in, like any other gifts, it must be received. Diba? It must be open. Sino sa inyo, you love receiving gifts? We all love receiving gifts, right? Aminin natin. We need to, you know, we need to be true uh, to ourselves. We love receiving gifts, but you haven't fully received that gift until you open it. Ano yan? When somebody handed you a gift, tatanungin nyo nagbigay sa'yo, ang nagustuhan mo ba yung gift ko? Ang ganda ng packaging. Okay? You know? Uh, nagustuhan niyo po ba? Kasha po ba sa inyo yung, ano, yung gift? Ang sarap ng amoy nung dami. No! You've, you've got to open you know, what is inside for you to feel it, for you to touch it, for you to smell it. Mmm, amoy rustans. Mmm, amoy Debenhams. Mmm, you know, amoy crispy pata. It's, it's, it's something like that. You've got to open it. If it is a food, you've got to taste it for you to appreciate that gift, Right? And, you know, and, and, and here, in order for the tribes, in order for the tribes to receive their inheritance, they must actually occupy it. Kaya sabi ni Joshua, anong iniintay ninyo? You know, what are you waiting for? The land is not the one who will come to you. You need to go to the land, right? And God's, God can promise. He can make promises. But in order for the promise to be fulfilled, it must be received by faith. Amen? We don't have our, our, our own school building yet, but right now we are receiving it by faith. Amen? We haven't this, you know, we, we don't have yet these things that we are longing and desiring for, but right now we are seeing it from the inside. We're seeing it from the inside and you are acting on the side of faith. And this is also an instruction for us. 
Just what Peter wrote in, in 2 Peter 1, 3, 3 and 4. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. And take a look at this. Through this, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature. In the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So church, we've got to recognize that every promise of God requires an act of faith on our part in order to receive it. You know, for example, God promised His only begotten Son, Jesus, in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He sent His Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not be perished, but, have, but will have an everlasting life. You know, receiving Jesus, putting our faith in Him, and that is receiving by faith. Matthew, 6, 30, Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 33. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Brothers and sisters, probably you have received many promises already, and uh, some of them have already been fulfilled. But most of the promises, you are still waiting you know, for it come to pass. But, you know... They are not received passively. You've got to do something. We've got to do something. You know, they are activated by an act of faith. We need to believe Him. We need to seek Him. We need to, you know, we need to seek His kingdom first, His righteousness. We need to confess our sins. We need to love Him. We need to present our requests to God and receive the promises of God through an act of faith. So that is the second thing, second key truth in this story. The third is, yung incomplete obedience ng bayan ng Israel, the incomplete obedience of Israel in driving out other nations will lead them away from God. Because God wants their complete obedience. Okay? Kaya lang hindi kumpleto. Papaano po yun nangyari? Okay? For, there, there is another example that, uh, that shows up repeatedly in the book of Joshua. And one of them we can find in Joshua 17, verses 14 and 8 to 18. The people of Joseph, so here comes the tribe of Joseph. The people of Joseph said to Joshua, Why have you given us only one allotment and one portion? Okay, sorry. One portion for inheritance. We are numerous people and the Lord has blessed us abundantly. If you are numerous, sabi ni Joshua, if you are numerous, Joshua answered, and if the hill country of Ephraim is too small for you, go up into the forest and clear land for yourselves there in the land of the Perizzites and the Raphaites. Then the people of Joseph replied, the hill country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who lived in the plain have iron chariots, both, both those in Bethshan and its settlements and those in the valley of Jezreel. But Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, you are numerous and very powerful and you will have not only one allotment but the forested hill country as well. Clear it and its farthest limits will be yours through the Canaanites of iron chariots and though they are strong, you can drive them out. Now, um, church, if you are going to read again the book of Joshua, in the middle part, in the actual conquest of the land, you know, in order for them to come and dwell in the land, they must drive out po yung mga inhabitants there. And these inhabitants are, the, are pagan nations. Okay? And then the, the, the Raphites, the, Paris, the Perizzites, or kung ano may mga Zites na yan, Right? And then uh, they have to drive them out so that they can start occupying the land. Now, there are portions in the book of Joshua that they were not able to drive them out. Okay? They compromised, actually. And uh, the problem was not their ethnicity. But the problem here is about the idolatry and the wickedness of that nations that is inhabiting, you know, the land of Canaan. 
And as long as the other nation stayed there, as long as the other nation stayed there in, the la- in that land, yung idolatry practices, the idolatry practices would be a thorn in the side of the Israelites and that would lead them away from God. And that's why in the last part, you know, in the later part of the book of Joshua, before Joshua, you know, you know uh, passed away, he has this speech na sinasabi niya, he's, he's like rebuking the whole of the nation. Okay? Do not turn away from God. Okay? Do not turn from Him. Do not turn to these idols. And then that's why, because He is seeing, you know, the probably yung, yung capacity or yung tendency ng nation to fall away. So, this is a reminder to us that sin is not to be played with. Right? And there is a reason why Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, now, if our eye is causing us to sin, we need to gouge out the, others, the other eye, throw it away. If our hands, you know, is causing us, if the hand are, is causing us to sin, we need to cut it off, you know, and, you know, and, and throw it away. And I believe that he is not spe- uh, speaking literally here. Nadudukutin natin yung mata natin every time that we commit sin. Yeah, that we will, we will cut off our, our arms you know, Jesus is not speaking about that literally, but He is communicating it to us, how the, the gravity of sin. And how unless we destroy it, the sin will destroy us. Right? And uh, here, the key truth, the fourth key truth, here in this story, after receiving the land and after being there, no, the promise in the promised land, and this is what I want to focus today in this message. The ancient Israel, there were how many tribes? You think? There are 12 tribes of Israel, one belonging to each of the 12 sons of Jacob. And one of his sons was Levi. And the descendants of Levi, they're called the Levites, were the priestly tribe in Israel. So sila yung priestly tribe among the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, who are this tribe of Levi? You know, who are they? The tribe of Levi, according to GodTV.com, the tribe of Levi was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were part of God's chosen people, beneficiaries of God's promised land. But once they took hold of Canaan and the Levites had no land portion of their own. Instead, they received the priesthood as their inheritance. Levi is the third son of Jacob. There were few mentions about him in the Bible, but the most prominent one was when he and Simeon killed Shechem, that was the man who raped their sister, and all of his people. And because of this, because of that, okay, they received no blessing from Jacob when he departed from earth. Unlike their father Levi, the Levites received blessings when they killed those who dishonored God's name. And their righteous zeal positioned them to become God's defender of His honor. And from that day on, they were set apart for a vital task, being ministers to the presence of God. So that's their part. That's their role. That's their identity. Coming from the tribe of Levi, the Levites are the one who does the priestly duties you know, among the whole tribes of Israel. Now, the priests serve the priests are the ones who served in the tent meeting inside the tabernacle. What do they do? They offer sacrifices to God for the sins of the people and they speak for God to the people and the Levites served in various other functions such as packing up and moving the tabernacle from one place to another, okay? Guarding it, uh, cleaning it, and uh, maybe, you know, uh, when we were starting the church, ako, I experienced that. I'm, uh, I'm part of the, the set-up team, the pack-up team, diva. You will set up the speakers, the chairs, and everything inside the church. You will clean the church. You know? And that was the role of the Levites in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. And that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister and to pronounce blessings in His name, as they still do today. And that is why the Levites have no share or inheritance among their brothers. Why? 
because the Lord is their inheritance. As the Lord your God told them. Here we can see, you know, the, uh, the identity of the tribe of Levites that they have no portion of the land. Okay, why? Because the Lord is their inheritance. And as the God gives uh, commandments or commands to Joshua, nahatiin na yung land of promise to the, the, to, the, to, the, to the tribes of Israel, Joshua quoted, you know, Joshua quoted Deuteronomy chapter 10. And when he said that in Joshua chapter 13, verse 33, but to the tribe of Levi, okay, he divided all the tribes already. And he said here, but, but to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given them no inheritance. Wala silang mamanahin. Pero hindi lang po doon It didn't stop there. And Joshua continued, The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as He promised them. Now, instead of giving them a land, you know, the portion of the land to the tribe of Levi, they were spread out through all you know, other tribes. Uh, they were ano, assigned po kasi. The tribe of Levi, yung clan ni Levi, he divided it, and then they were all scattered among all the 11 tribes. Ano yung kanilang duty? Ano yung kanilang dapat gawin or their task? They are to help the tribe, other tribes, to maintain their faithfulness to God. Okay? And um, they did not receive their own portion of the promised land because the Lord was their inheritance. The Lord was their portion. And I'd like to say that the Levite's portion is the Lord, and that is pointing us to an inheritance that is greater than a land. Because, you know, in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, and the fullness thereof and everything in it belongs to the Lord. So what does it mean? What does this mean and what is the significance of this statement for us today? First of all, yung reality, the reality of the, or the significance of this uh, is this. We are all priests. Can you tell that to the person uh, beside you? You are a priest. You know? Did you know that? You are a priest. We are all priests. And this might uh, surprise you today, especially if you're coming from a Catholic background, that you have this other picture of a priest. And we are not only saints according to the New Testament, but we are also priests. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 and 9 and 10. As you come to Him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to Him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering sacrifices or spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 9 and 10, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Why? Because now you are His people. Now you are His holy nation. Now you are His royal priesthood. Amen? In the Old Testament, there was a specific tribe, this tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi, their, fa their function is, you know, to serve the priestly duties you know, among, the, among the 11 tri other tribes. But on the side of the cross of Jesus and after the resurrection, you know, we are all priests of God. Not probably priests by birth, but rather than priests chosen by God. You know, and, 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 and we are chosen people. We are royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are God's people. We belong to Him and He belongs to us. And so what does that mean? In the Old Testament, you know, the priests were the mediators between God and His people. They stand in between. Okay? Their two main functions 
are this. First, they offered prayers to God and their sacrifice and sacrifices to God for the people, you know, because the individuals they cannot approach God directly. They cannot go inside the tabernacle or the temple. They need to go to a priest and the priest will offer the sacrifice in behalf of them. And the second duty of the priest, they proclaim the words of God to the people. They thought, they tutored, they, they proclaim, and even they are making a written copies of the law and they are the ones who, it, who are explaining it to the people. So the people, they receive God's word through the priests. All right? And the priests were the mediators, sila yung nasa gitna, the middlemen between God and His people. Did you get the picture? Okay? I hope you get, you, you get that. But after Jesus died, and when He rose from the dead, you know, the curtain of the temple torn you know, from top to bottom. And the sacrificial system was fulfilled by the sacrificial act of Jesus on the cross. That there's no longer a need for an animal sacrifice for the atonement of sin. Jesus fulfilled the sacrificial law on the cross. And that made a way for every single believer to enter the presence of God through one mediator, and that is Jesus Himself. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. 1 Timothy chapter 2, 3-6, to six, And this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, that man or the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all men, the testimony given in its proper time. So church, there is one mediator, and that is Jesus. There is no longer need for a human sacrifice. Uh, not human sacrifice. A human mediator, I mean. There's no need for any other sacrifices you know, uh, coming from the animals because salvation doesn't come through a priest or any sacraments at all. Salvation comes from our faith in the Lord Jesus. You don't need to go through any pastor or leader you know, uh, to gain forgiveness. You don't need to go to any priest and confess your sins you know, to him to be declared forgiven. We can all go directly to Jesus. Amen? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 6 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. And let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So there is no human mediator the way that there were in the Old Testament. Instead, on the other side of the cross, on the side of the cross, and after the resurrection, we are all priests. And we can do that royal priesthood, you know, right now. By how? You know, how can we do that? How can we perform that royal priesthood in our time and season today? First, we can all intercede for God. Or we can all intercede for others before God. James 5 and 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Because the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And what else? We can actually offer sacrifices to God. Ihanda ko na po ba yung mga manok namin? Ihanda ko na po ba yung ano, mga baka dyan? Ilabas na yan. Tutumbay na natin yan. No. We can offer sacrifice to God. Not by the blood of the bulls, by goats, or any lives. But we can offer sacrifice to God through a sacrificial love. And that is Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy... To offer your bodies as what? Living sacrifices. Holy and pleasing to God. And this is your spiritual act of worship. 
And not only that, we can perform our royal priesthood by not just interceding other people before God, not by just offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, but we can also declare the Word of God you know, to the people around us. We can be part of bringing God's Word you know, to others who are in need to hear the, 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 the words and the message of truth and love. First Peter 2, 9 and 10, again, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness, because before we were in the darkness, now into His marvelous light. So we can proclaim whatever the things that we have gone through the time that we were still in the darkness. We can proclaim and testify the goodness of God to these people. Because once you, we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we have not received His mercy, but now we have received the mercy of God. You are a priest. We are all priests. Just as the Levites were scattered among the territories of the promised land in order for them to help the other tribes, to help the people of God, to stay faithful, you know, to stay faithful to God, right now, we are called to do the same. God is calling us out, you know, to the different mountains of culture right now, whether it is in business, in education, in the church, whether it's in the entertainment, you know, God is calling you right now as a Levite, as a priest, to do, to do these priestly duties. You know, to proclaim His Word. To, to offer prayers, you know, before God. And we have been called to do the same. And part of our role as believers is to help other people. Uh, to help other people, you know, in prayer. Lifting them up, you know, in prayer. Advising them, counseling them. And that is our part right now as the believers of Jesus Christ. And lastly today, you know, I'd, in, in this theme, you know, in this story, you know, it keeps on mentioning that the Lord is their portion. I want you to say that to yourself right now. The Lord is my portion. You know, the Lord is my portion, is your portion. Unlike the other tribes, Yung mga Levites, again, hindi po sila nabigyan ng mana. They don't have their own territory. They don't have their own land. They were scattered among the territories in order to help the people of God to stay faithful to Him. And they were told that they would not be given you know, the land, the land as their portion. Why? Because Joshua said, the Lord is your portion. The Lord is your inheritance. Nalulungkot ako, I, nalulungkot ako no, sa mga Levites. They, they don't have, when I was reading this, I kind of feel a bit sad. Uh, technically lang, you know. Because among the 12 tribes, sila yung walang lupa na sasakahin. They don't have any land to build their own house. They don't have any land for their children to enjoy and play. Nakikirent lang sila among the 11 other tribes. You know, no land to cultivate. You know, do you think that this is a good deal? Probably for, for them, you know, if tayo nasa panahon nila, this is not a good deal, Lord. <laughs> it's probably not a good deal. You know, or do you think that they were actually given a better deal? That's the better deal because the Lord their inheritance. And so church, I want, I, I want you to resonate with the words of, you know, of the psalmist in, in Psalm 73 that he said, Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. And my portion. When? For a week lang ba? For a month? For a year? The God is my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made that sovereign, the sovereign Lord my refuge and I will tell of your deeds. It is good to be near God. 
probably that was the mindset of the Levites, even though that they don't have any land, but they are very near to God. They serve God. They serve God's people. And for them, they settled there. So what does it mean that God is your portion and your inheritance? To see that God is your portion and your inheritance is to see Him as your wealth, to see Him as your richest possession, to see God as the one who sustains you, to see, to see that God is the one who satisfies your thirst, your hunger, and it is, it is to desire and live for more of Him. No, not more stuff, but more of Him. More of you, Lord. And it means believing that everything that belongs to God is yours. It's ours because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Romans 8, 16 and 17, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Everybody say heirs. In the heirs, huh? Heirs, okay? And, and the of God, the heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. Galatians 4, verse 4 to 7, But when the time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Okay? You sabihin mo nga, if you're, I'm a son, I'm a daughter, you know? Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His sons into our hearts. And the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Since you are God's son, you are God's daughter, we are God's children, we are also called an heir. We are God's heir, and we are a co-heir of Jesus Christ. We are heirs of all that is His. And I want you to think of that inheritance that you receive right now, that we can all receive right now. What are those? We have this restored relationship with God. We have received His Holy Spirit. We have received an eternal life. We are now living in the kingdom of God. We have a treasure in heaven. We have a mansion in heaven. Even though you don't have a house here on earth, we have a mansion in heaven. And that is part of our inheritance. You know, we have Him. We have His kingdom. And His kingdom is ours as well. And this speaks of a greater inheritance compared to any single piece of a land or anything or any jewelry or any bank savings, you know, that our loved ones will leave us here on earth because everything will pass away, brothers and sisters. The only thing that will remain here on earth is His Word. His Word will never pass away. His promises will never pass away. In fact, his promises are meant to be fulfilled because we have a God who is so good and who is so faithful that He who promised is faithful. And this speaks of our greatest inheritance. Lastly, then the king will say to those on his right in Matthew 25, then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Church, the Levites, they did not receive their inheritance in a picture of a land, but they received the best portion. In the same way, no matter what we may gain or lose here on earth, He is our portion. Anong Tagalog ng portion? Bahagi. That is your part. That is your bahagi. Okay? He is your portion. And in Him, we find all that our hearts truly need. The Levites, they were not given a land because the Lord and their calling to minister to Him and to others was their best portion and their greatest inheritance. So right now, church, let's think about this again. Do I have an inheritance? To receive. Probably we are thinking of a physical inheritance, literal inheritance. But don't worry about that, whether you will receive it or not. 
we're not actually wishing you know, that somebody has to die first in order for us to receive an inheritance. That's not the point here. But what we're talking about here this morning is the inheritance that the Bible is telling us. The inheritance that we can receive from God, our Father. We're going to come before the Lord today And I want you to think about the things that you were hoping for. For you and for your family in the future. And most of the times when we talk about inheritance, there's some kind of a you know, spirit of worry and anxiety. That, Wala naman ako mamanahin. I don't have any portion in the family. But church, God is right now affirming you and assuring you that He is your best portion. He is your greatest inheritance that you can ever have right now. Let's come before the Lord in worship. And I want you to, to worship God with all your heart. And then we're going to pray. And then we're going to lift up ourselves, surrender everything to Him.